Good day chaps. So today's video is going to cover another rather odd project. One that had a lot of potential, but found itself in ever increasing difficulties. It's a gun system that could rip apart anything it chose, and could fire off more fin stabilized discarding saber rounds than an entire tank regiment in a matter of seconds. This is the story of the Green Mace. To understand Green Mace, we have to go back to World War II, which had ended the year previously. The British had a surprisingly effective number of anti-aircraft weapons, which can be crudely broken down into three areas. Light anti-aircraft, or LAA, such as the Vickers 40mm and the odd 6-pounder. Then there was the HAA, or heavy anti-air, including the obsolete 3-inch guns, the 3.7-inch, the 4.5-inch, and the large 5.25 inch or 133 mm turreted guns. There was also a vast amount of rocket batteries of various designs, which had some mixed results, but ended up killing more British civilians than the German bombers they were engaging. These weapons are generally a mixed bag effectively. They accounted for a higher ratio of kills than German anti-aircraft guns due to devices like the Vickers predictors reliable proximity fuses, and the excellent use of radar, which all helped to force the German bombers to fly higher and wider to avoid flak. Yet, what goes up must come down, and studies have shown that many civilians lost their lives due to falling munitions. Yet they also became very adept at engaging and shooting down the V1 systems. Post-war, however, it was quickly decided that newer platforms would be needed. The war had shown that bombers were increasing in size, payload and speed, as well as the altitude they could fly. And this required weapons that could not only engage high altitude bombers, the likes that Russia would be working on, but also fast moving jet type planes and ground attack aircraft. Thus the UK set about an extensive overhaul of both systems, and while they had working guided missile systems from the mid 1940s, these were expensive and still in their infancy, and the War Office had a habit of siding with the tried and tested where possible. The LAA program saw several designs and developments, such as the Red King and Red Queen. These 42mm weapons, the former by Bofors and the latter by the Armament Design Establishment, or ADE, began in early 1949 and continued into the early 1950s, along with radar tracking systems, such as Orange Pippin and Red Indian. Ultimately, these weapons would not progress, as while they had a very high rate of fire, the cost in size, weight and price, as well as an engagement range of just 10,000 foot, was deemed unacceptable, and the Bofors L-70 would become the standard LAA platform. Meanwhile, on the heavy anti-aircraft front, a new program was started under the name of Rate Fixer, a program to enhance the current weapons in both ranges, rate of fire and lethality. This led initially to five systems being put in place, a modified 3.7 inch anti-aircraft gun with a high speed loading system, rate fixer K, C and CR which featured hoppers and drums or belt fed, and rate fixer CN by Fraser Nash that worked with a belt feed and utilised hydraulic feed systems. However, despite some working prototypes, these were largely bypassed in 1950 when work was ramped up with international tensions with the Russians rising. This led to a further five designs for larger guns. The first was a 5.25 inch gun with a 65 pound round and a Probert rifling. That's a smoothbore tube with only a partial rifling in the middle. This gives the round spin but then smooths out the driving bands to reduce drag on the round. Two other designs were for a squeezebore concept. One 4 inch squeezed down to 3 inch and one 4.26 inch squeezed down to 3.2 inches by the ADE and Vickers respectfully, with a third by the CEAD, or the Chief Engineer of Armament Design, which utilised a 3 inch gun down to a 2.32 inch core using fin stabilised rounds with a VT or variable time fuse, and finally a 5 inch gun with a 2.7 inch fin stabilised discarding sabre round with a direct action fuse developed by the same engineers, but to mounted on a new platform created by Vickers. These later fin-stabilised discarding sabre rounds 
had already been in testing since 1948, after several captured examples of German rounds had been brought back to the UK, and work had started on 2.2 inch rounds, which, after some tweaking with the nose and tail materials, were able to reach velocities from a smoothbore gun 5.4 inch up to 5,402 foot per second. Of the proposed guns, the Vickers 4.26 inch squeeze bore and the 5 inch 2.32 fin stabilizing discarding sabre ground were selected to proceed. By 1951, progress with the Vickers gun was not showing much promise, and a new 4 inch 102mm gun with a skirted band projectile had begun its development. This gun was novel in being water cooled with an extremely high rate of fire and velocity and utilised the hydraulic control system. Meanwhile, the 5-inch gun and Vickers mounting would be provisionally accepted under two names, Green Mace and Fixed Mace, in 1952. The former to be the complete system, and the latter a similar mounting for trials purposes, with a fixed mounting in just one azimuth. By 1953, the 102mm gun is accepted to progress further, and is given the designation X1E1 and is now mounted to the fixed mace firing platform under a new name Green Maid and undergoes its first live firing trials in 1954 while a year later in 55 the 5 inch or 127mm fin stabilizing discarding sabo barrel is fitted to the fixed mace also under the name Green Maid this also appears to be where the confusion on the current gun originated from, as the weapon that remains is recorded as 102mm, but the name is written as QF 127mm, which is the 5 inch calibre. Meanwhile, from 1954 to 1955, another AA project, the X4 Longhand, is also under development. This involved a 3.7 inch Mark VI gun with a 12 round automatic feed that stemmed from the rate fixer CN program, and the X4 shorthand, which was a manually loaded system undergoing live trials. Work is allowed to continue on these two as an insurance backup in 1956, should the two experimental guns run into any problems. However, at this time the Royal Artillery also decided to back out of the anti-aircraft role, handing over most of the project to the Royal Air Force. In 1956, the 102mm gun is mounted onto the Green Mace mobile platform. However, the testing is less than stellar, and multiple failures occur. The weapon consistently jams, and bits fall off it. Over 900 rounds are fired, with almost 80 failures, approximately 12 rounds per fault, and this was deemed beyond the scope of a simple fix, coupled with the fact that she was one chunky system coming in at 27.5 tonnes in the travel position and barely able to move under her own power via two Rolls-Royce B40 engines and this resulted in it being carried around on a 30 tonne flatbed just to move it from A to B while it also required a large generator unit on site to provide power and the wheels removed to load it onto its firing position. So what was the system capable of if it worked? Well for this there are two sets of data listing the two different guns. The 5 inch gun is recorded as holding up to 13 rounds per drum on either side, with an engagement range of up to 25,000 foot, but up to 30,000 foot was possible, and the time of flight to reach this was recorded as just 9.7 seconds. The rate of fire was recorded as a continuous burst of fire for 20 seconds, with a 20 second interval, and a total rate of fire of 80 rounds per minute, although it had used its ammunition up well before this could take place. It appears from a later document that two rounds were made, a DA or direct action and a VT or variable timed. The projectiles differed, the former at 15 pounds and the latter at 23 pounds, with a total weight of 65 pounds per round. To load the gun, the situation was a bit more complex. A second pair of loaders were to man forklift trucks, positioned to the side. They would then drive up and align ammo stillages with the drums or hoppers, and then get out the cab and manually feed the rounds into the magazine while the gun was cocked up in a reload position. Theoretically staggering their fire in a battery, which meant that at least one system was always in a reload cycle while others were firing. 
The gunner himself, on both samples, sat in a small cockpit to one side and would have been fed the tracking data from a separate radar system. The 104mm gun is recorded as having an elevation of 85 degrees and a range of 39,000 foot and a muzzle velocity of 3,100 foot per second, but bizarrely is also recorded as having a heavier round at 32 pounds and a total weight of 72 pounds per round with a rate of fire of 40 rounds per minute being recorded. In 1957, the 102mm X1E1 gun is abandoned, and the simpler X4 long handgun is accepted into service after passing its evaluation period, while work on projects like the Red Heathen guided missile were also showing promise as a high-altitude surface-to-air missile. Green Mace would struggle on for just one more year with a 5-inch version, undergoing firing trials as part of the Mace system, before also being cancelled. Although not all was lost, much of the information gathered was later used in the design of the 3-inch N1 guns using the Tiger-class cruisers, where they also didn't work very well, but that was somebody else's problem. Today, the only surviving prototype is in storage at the Royal Artillery Reserve Collection, pending a new home. Well guys, I hope you liked that. There's been a lot of odd pages popping up over the years on Green Maze, so I thought it'd be worthwhile actually going to the original archive material and digging it all out. If you did like this, do give the channel a like and subscribe, it does help it grow slowly. And if you've got any suggestions or vehicles you want, let me know next time. Until then, toodle pip.